Hello, I'm Abia X Toy Cat, and sniffers are a bit like magnets in that if you have one, you basically have none. If you want to have fun, you're going to need at least two, which means I have some archaeology to do because I figured I would take you through the entire process of getting a sniffer, hatching a sniffer, and then breeding them together so I can make a sniffer farm and get all of the fun ancient plants. And hopefully along the way, I can work towards my big goal for this update of getting every single trimp times four, as well as all of the other archaeology items. It'll be a lot of fun, but for now, let's go hatch our sniffer. Or to be more realistic with you, let's place down the sniffer egg and then wait forever for it not to hatch. By the way, place a sniffer on moss and it will hatch twice as fast. You'll see these fun green sparkles as proof of that, but let's come back here later and see how well it's done, because in the meantime, I need to find him another one. Before we go on the trip, I'd recommend making sure you have some form of boat, and if you have an elite truck, that's a big bonus, but a must is obsidian, because we're going to travel some serious distances potentially, looking for a sniffer egg. They're only found in ocean ruins, and so we need to find one of those. The Never also has the handy upside of being a place to find some soul sand and some magma if you forgot to bring some with you. Because although you might be lucky like me and know exactly where an ocean ruin is, and know where you could maybe do some archaeology, you could also be unlucky like me and only find wheat and coal. And honestly, i just about given up on this place. Uh, until the very last second where I found three of these right here, and look at that, that's a sniffer egg. And although getting a sniffer egg is great, you know what's better than just sniffer eggs? The ability to breathe something you can give yourself with soul sand or magma. These little bubble columns that come out of them and push you up and down are actually three sources of oxygen, and you know, I was <laughs> genuinely not expecting to find a sniffer egg in my first ruin. What incredible luck. If you're not having such incredible luck, just remember the odds of finding a sniffer egg are about 1 in 13 per suspicious sand or or suspicious dirt that you find in an ocean, meaning that, you know, as long as you find a decently sized ocean ruin, you should eventually find it. If you are finding the tiny ocean ruins, just keep waiting till you find one of these, because wherever you look in it, you seem to just find more and more suspicious stuff, which is always great if you need more coal or wooden hose. Wow, I sure am lacking those. My hose are just not adorable enough lately. And the reason I say that is just pure maths, because when you find one of these ocean ruins, like that one over there, there's just a single building, then you're only gonna find maybe three or four suspicious gravel in the entire place, and what are your odds of getting a sniffer egg? Well, apparently uh, my odds of getting archaeology are good, but it's kind of like lottery tickets. If you wanted to guarantee you'd win the lottery, and you didn't care about finances, you could just buy a billion tickets, one with every single number of possibility on there, and if you wanted to guarantee you'd lose the lottery, then I guess you'd buy zero tickets, but the fewer number you buy, the worse, and so in general, uh, you know, that's, that's bad financial advice, but it's good advice for Minecraft. Find the ocean ruins, which have more suspicious sand, and you'll do better, uh, and you'll also find a lot more wooden hose. And archaeology. A part of me wants to keep all the things I find while doing archaeology, but I just cannot justify keeping those wooden hoes. See, this is me getting better at inventory management. I'm trying to find as many ocean ruins as I can on the way home, by the way, because even though I have a second sniffer egg, the more sniffer eggs you have, the faster one of them might hatch, and so it's totally worth doing uh, but it's not paying any dividends for me yet. Unlike a lot of structures in Minecraft, by the way, there's no real way to find ruins. Uh, if you want to find them, you just kind of have to look around your world. The same is true for trail ruins, actually. Uh, it's just there's a few structures in Minecraft where you have to look and you have to specifically know what you're looking out for. And in this case, uh, avoid coral reefs if you really want to do your best job, because it's so hard to find stuff when they're mixed in there. Although apparently right here we do have a shipwreck, which might be a nice, uh, you know, bet to go into just to get those armor trims that I'm still missing. Let's see if it's sunken down here. Oh, a protection-free cap. That is very enticing, Minecraft. But I was hoping for something more like a buried treasure map. Nope. Okay, we're out. Oh, there we go. Third time's the charm. I don't have the inventory spaces for this, but I really want to keep all the iron as well. It's just too valuable not to. But let's let's just get out there. Uh, by the way, soul sand, great option when you're just about dying at the bottom of the ocean to get yourself back up to the top. So I found about four suspicious sand on my second ocean ruin, which means if you found just those ones, you could probably expect to find a sniffer, or two sniffers like you'll actually need, in about seven separate ruins, which isn't that terrible, but you probably will have to travel for thousands of blocks, which is why the never portal advice always applies. Also, I think my new never portal was so close to my old one, it just went through the same place, which is handy, because I already have a lovely, uh, <laughs> you know, big pathway built here specifically for that. After adding 
adding my newest shard to the collection, I've now got 8 out of 20 pottery shards and a full 6 out of 17 trims. There's a lot more work to do, clearly. Anyway, though, it's back to sniffer time, and as you can see, in the time that I've been gone, precisely zero progress has been made, but that's not going to stop us from placing another one of these down and hoping that this one grows too. So there is a lot of waiting in the sniffer process, because you not only have to wait for the sniffer eggs to hatch, but then there's a huge amount of time between when the baby sniffler hatches, it's going to be super adorable, and when we get something that's usable. So you need to have something that can fill that time, and my idea for such a thing is to build a place where the sniffers will eventually go. Do you know how I have a giant bee where I store my bees? I think it's kind of cute personally. Uh, you know, in the same way that I have that, I figured it might be fun to build a sniffer in which the sniffers will go, which is a really good idea until you realize that sniffers are very red and very green and also very yellow, which means we need to get our hands on a lot of dye. Thankfully, I have a very easy die making machine. It's just a bunch of pistons that push grass one way and the other, which means that when we turn this on and play, we, but you know, let's just let's just play some bone mill. Let's temporarily turn on this, and then as you can see, oh god, things go bizarre. But when we bone mill, lots and lots of flowers get made, which is great for yellow dye and also for <laughs> apparently mostly yellow dye. Um, but yeah, as you can see, we got ourselves some nice yellow flowers, and we can turn this off now because it's hell in here. Oh god, I can't turn it off. Good news! While I grab the ingredients that I'm going to need to build a sniffer, one of my sniffers almost hatched. It'll be really great when one of these is actually done because right now I'm just using- Oh wow! <laughs> Perfect timing! I was going to use this as a guide on how to build a giant version of him and it looks like he has come through ready for me. So I have to hope he doesn't wander off and get lost but I'm going to build a scale model of this guy in Minecraft and I feel like right over here is the place to do it. I have this big body of water that I don't really use because the Oak slide is the only part of water that really needs to be useful here, which means just above all this glow lichen, there is a lot of space. Space which perhaps could be taken up by one of these guys. Also, aren't they so much cuter when they're tiny? So yeah, they've got feet which are vaguely purple. I'm gonna go for grey to approximate that. Then they've got some red legs, that are oh, this red, not leg, like body, with a green kind of shell on top of it. And then they've got a slight green around their face and yellow on top of that. Which means I'll need some green concrete powder, nice and easy. I'll need some red concrete powder, or uh, maybe slightly more inventory intensive. And I'll need some yellow concrete powder, which I already have. These things combined should allow me to make something fun. Or maybe will just cause me an inventory management nightmare. So this is going to be the base part of our sniffer. The sniffer is quite an interesting mop in that it has six feet. You know, it technically uh, feels more like an insect than a, a real animal, but we're gonna need uh, six of these separate feet, which we're gonna do slightly hovering above the water. Hopefully, if it goes below the water line, no one will notice. If we need to, we can build this uh, further down. But for now, we just wanna have a lot of these, uh, in fact, uh, five more of these. So let's do that. Now that the feet are complete, it's time to move on to- Oh no, don't do it, Sniffer! Okay, apparently he doesn't mind falling off some blocks. But it's time to move on to the rest of the body, which means lots of red is going to be needed. Oh, the second one's hatched now! Yay! Okay, so... Again, letting these guys walk around free is a bad idea given how long it took me, but we'll just let that go for now while I do some red concrete building. I've always felt like concrete is one of the silliest blocks because of the way you have to do this before it's usable, but that's fine. <laughs> This is definitely the most satisfying way to make concrete, by the way, because you make a big tower all the way up to world height, you place a single water bucket, and then, oh, I can't replace it because I'm above world height. Uh, but once you place a single water bucket at not world height because of weird bugs, uh, now you can have the really enjoyable pleasure of just breaking down in a hurry. <laughs> And if you're fast enough, you'll even beat the water here, which is always kind of fun. Although, looks like we have a lot of other friends joining us today. Might need these guys just to get a little bit of experience on my shears, however. But yeah, boom, we've now just got ourselves all the blocks we need to make our sniffer. It does feel mean to lock up sniffers inside of an area, but if you want them to be most effective, it's going to be incredibly important to actually take advantage of that. So yeah, with that said, here are my sniffers. Let's hope that goes well. Now let's build ourselves 
a big uh, red thing. But whatever you build here, you just need to keep in mind a slight accommodation for the fact that there is that there'll need to be a floor to the building. There'll need to be a way uh, that you can actually collect all of these sniffer pods, assuming you don't want to do it manually. I think in Minecraft, ultimately, you can build any form and any uh, any farm and any form that you want to. But it is also worth keeping in mind that like some forms are slightly more advantageous than others. So having a slightly dropped floor here will be maybe slightly useful later. But for now, let's build the big red that goes around the sniffer. It's fairly simple as best I can tell. It's just a big red box. I think this is one of the most Minecrafty mobs they've designed in a while. It's a mob that is just a giant cube and the giant cube is the, is the design, it is all of the fun. And I also think it's Minecrafty because of the way the mechanic works. Or the, the way, you know, the sniffers allow you to get more sniffers. Like I said earlier, having one sniffer will not allow you to really do much of them, but two sniffers creates near infinite. And this is technically true for any mob in Minecraft and has been for a while. If you have more than one of it, you can get a lot more of it. However, um, it's especially true of the sniffer because if you want anything that comes from it, either of the two plants, you need to have a lot of them. And if you want to have super cute sniffers everywhere in your world, rather than just two of them floating around the plains, then this is one of the ways to do that. But anyway, um, while, while we build the uh, the sniffer here, I'd love to do the fast plot cut with you. But one of the things that I think is, uh, you know, a, a lot of people do give me flack for it, especially, uh, you know, like people who, uh, you know, maybe aren't so familiar with the channel, being like, oh, Toy Cat, I can't believe you talk about things unrelated to Minecraft in the videos. But I would make a, a you know, I would make an argument I think a lot of people might agree with, which is that playing games is a great opportunity to to relax, uh, but it's also a great opportunity, you know, like to me, uh, pretending relaxation is just a time to turn off your brain and not think about anything is a very cynical view. Personally, I think that, you know, playing Minecraft and once you get into the Zen mode, it's a good opportunity to start thinking about all sorts of things, philosophy. Be right back, by the way. Anyway, there's something really interesting that I get from video games, which is that even though they are this great outlet, this great opportunity to relax, when I'm playing in them, I kind of like games like Minecraft, where, uh, you know, you actually do kind of challenge yourself sometimes. I've not built a sniffer farm uh, before. Will this one work? I'm not too sure. Uh, but the end result is, if it does work, I'm you know, putting in some effort that will hopefully result in a really nice reward. And that is uh, a really fun idea to me, like putting in work onto something that is new and kind of challenging in some ways, uh, but will result in some benefit. Why is it uh, that, you know, like uh, certain forms of relaxation are challenging and certain ones are not? I think actually having these conversations is interesting because, uh, you know, to me, uh, the real benefit also, <laughs> I have a whole stack of red concrete we've got to go get now. You know, if nothing else, placing these constant concrete towers is actually an opportunity to see your build from up high. And uh, so far, I think this one is going just fine. But yeah, Minecraft is a sandbox game where you can do whatever you want, but yet you presumably have some interest in making a new farm. Why uh, Why is it that you want to continuously challenge yourself rather than doing the same things? There's some uh, fun in that novelty that you're presumably seeking, and I think that's incredibly interesting. But yeah, uh, I believe... Uh, that from the red, we have a pretty even layer up to the green. Maybe a few blocks should seep through just to make it slightly more interesting. But for now, we'll just go have a nice green layer on top of this. Make a really weird cube look. <laughs> Again, this is <laughs> this is the weirdest Minecraft mob to build. But perhaps the easiest because he really is just a giant cube. And on front of the giant cube, I guess he has a face. And that face is going to be red. So we'll pre-place some of those blocks now. Um, if this is going to be like 10 blocks tall, his face is probably going to be like 8 by 8 so we'll just start placing some blocks over here, I guess, starting like down over there. Yep, perfect. <laughs> kind of fun sometimes trying to find the right uh, part bit. But we'll just build some of that up and then get back into the green concrete. Um, anyway, but yeah, I think um, some people, you know, reject the idea that like you should actually talk about anything but Minecraft while playing Minecraft. But the, the game is all about the purity. Talk about blocks and nothing else. Um, but if you've watched this channel for a while, you know that is 100% not what I do because I, I think that the deeper and more, in, you know, I, I think the deeper conversations are the ones that I actually are where my mind drift when I'm playing Minecraft. The reason I started this channel is because, uh, you know, or the reason uh, that I do these Let's Plays and they're one of my favorite types is because this is what's happening when I'm playing Minecraft. If I've got a task that requires a little bit of, like, uh, repetition, you could call it tedium if you want, but I, I, I find it to be a fun enough task, but I find, I find that while doing something that is uh, repetitive, my brain starts to engage and be like, you know, what if this was like blank, 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 different, different, different. Also, I realize now after doing the green that I probably could have done the red the same way by placing the green concrete powder and then later 
uh, concreting it up, but you're not. <laughs> let's pretend I don't know that. And let's also pretend I have enough green concrete, because we're going to move back to the face now. So the face is going to be... Um, a fairly easy part of this build. It looks incredibly odd so far, right? It looks a little too smooth, the red on top of the green. We probably should uh, work on that later. But for now, let's build around a face. Oh, this isn't 10 blocks wide. I have no idea where I got that idea from. But this face is going to be way too low, right? Let's let's look at a sniffer and confirm. Where about on the red does the face now? Okay, actually, the, the face is incredibly low. By pure luck, I have gotten this correct. And it's a few blocks wide, and then there's a green stripe. And then it's straight into yellow. So let's do that. I can't, you know, I'm always happy when I make a mistake and it turns out well. Um, you know, like some people would prefer to have all their successes feel like they're earned. Sometimes I love a good uh, success that you feel like you got by pure chance. Um, you know, one of, one of the things um, that I feel like a lot of people will say about like being on YouTube, it's like it's always uh, it's a pure chance thing. But, uh, you know, that that ignores the fact that many of the biggest creators on the site are ones who, like, you know, like, uh, I, I, I used to upload twice a day. I, I've got, like, thousands of videos, haven't missed a day in a very long time. And it's because, like, yeah, this is something, uh, you know, like, uh, there's, uh, I, I think there are two major components. Maybe, maybe if I could, if you don't mind me making a broad guess at what makes a uh, real success, I would say there's usually two factors. It's always, like, luck times something else, like, luck times, uh, you know, work put in. Because, you know, you can try to, as lucky as you'd like to be, you can't win the lottery if you don't enter. Or as lucky as you'd like to consider yourself to be, um, you can't, uh, you know, make make a new friend if you're not outside the house. I guess, you know, the internet, that's less true. But uh, whatever the thing may be, I feel like there is, like, a component of what you got to do there. Anyway, so now we need a bit more green concrete to finish up the sniffer, but it's a simple enough body design. And then we need to put a face on here. And then more importantly, we need to work out a floor design where we can have a minecart hopper running through it. Because just like how I have a minecart running all the way around and collecting all this bamboo, it's a fairly simple idea. It collects bamboo into a big chest, which I then turn straight into bamboo blocks. I'm going to have the same thing to collect all the sniff regs in there. I also need grass on the floor at some point, so we'll work it all out. Okay, so imagine there's a fully built sniffer here for just a second. As you can see, this is the head. It's, it's a very realistic head, that's the body. Now what we need to do is we need to make sure that the sniffers are going to actually be able to sniff seeds. Uh, you can't just have a red concrete base for this as much as you might want one. You need to have a base which is made from a, either mud or grass or dirt, or you can have moss as well. I hear sniffers love moss, uh, but you need to have it be one of those blocks. I'm gonna use mud because I wanna have an automated collection system and if you don't know mud is slightly lower down than other blocks you can see that from the tiny little step down you take on from mud over to there if you look at this ceiling block you can see I get slightly closer to it when I jump off the mud and that means that we can collect using a uh, you know like a, a minecart and a hopper uh, from just underneath the blocks or you could just use regular hoppers but the point being if you have mud uh, unlike all of the other blocks which are full blocks mud is a partial block and so it's the one I recommend uh, but again, you can use whatever you feel like using as long as it is a sniffer diggable block, which means it has to be grass-like. I mean, I would argue that mud is not grass-like, but I mean, depends on the type of person you are, maybe. Uh, anyway, so we're going to place all these blocks down, make sure the sniffers are very much contained in one place. By the way, if you thought I was exaggerating when I said sniffers take forever to grow, um, one, this one has ended up on my minecart tracks. Kind of inconveniencing my minecart there, friend. Uh, but two, notice how the entire time I've been building this, uh, you know, giant sniffer, I've been next to these sniffers. They've been within my loaded chunks. They have still not become adults. However, they might become adults soon, and when they do, it'll be a little bit harder to move them into the sniffer. So I'm gonna <laughs> put them on leads now. This is the most ridiculous thing, just watching them follow me. You know, it's fine. And we're gonna jump them up this staircase. Maybe, oh, is that gonna work? You know, it'll work just great for one of them at a time, maybe. And then we're gonna lead him inside, and I believe, uh, I bleed, okay. So there's one trapped underneath, so we'll take this lead off you. And then we're gonna go underneath and get this one on again. You know, nothing about the leading process makes sense. Like, why does it come from my head? Is there a good reason why it's up there? Uh, uh, but the other part of it that doesn't make sense is uh, why the sniffer kind of just ignores that he's being pulled most of the time. But anyway, yeah, uh, this is this is my baby sniffler area, and this is where they're going to grow up. Assuming they don't jump down onto that, I hope that they don't have such a high jump. We, You really would hope so, right? Yeah, it's got a, that, that can't be true. So now, uh, just to be extra sure, we'll place some bamboo blocks back here, maybe. I, I don't know, we can, we can make this more formal later. 
But for now, just place one of those. <laughs> you know, bamboo blocks kind of nice, huh? And now we can sit here and wait for the snippers to grow up just to really drill this in. I've, I've built an entire building around them. Well, I built 60% of a building around them. And yet, this is how long I'll be waiting. I'm gonna be a little productive while I wait, actually. I might as well get some uh, value out of this time. Oh no, they can climb through one wide yeah. gaps. Keep that in mind. <laughs> no, don't leave. I've spent so much effort getting you in there. I feel like Minecraft mobs are perfect at knowing exactly what the wrong thing to do would be, and then doing it anyway. Okay, so we're gonna have to just hide them off in there. You're gonna have to trust that they're growing. Aren't these guys just the cutest? Yeah, for real. I recommend, by the way, wherever you put your sniffer farm, if you want it to work in the background, um, if you're playing uh, Bedrock, in fact, if you're playing any edition, it needs to be somewhere near where you're going to exist quite a lot. My update adventures world is very big. It goes, like, in a lot of directions. I have a lot of things. And spreading things out was a thing I did for a while because it, you know, it results in fun travel experiences and whatnot. However, I would say that it actually results in lots of things just not working till you're nearby, which is actually a big downside in my opinion. So keep that in mind. But anyway, this is all of the green finished besides the top. We'll pretend there isn't a top for now. And now that the walls are just about complete, let me show you something fun here. I'm gonna show you how long it takes for a sniffer to grow up. I'm gonna uh, bear in mind we've put like 20 something minutes in there already. Let's just stare at the sniffers and see how long it takes them. We'll probably have to put like some extra protection around us to make sure we don't get slain by something. And maybe like a torch or two might be a good bet. Okay, just like as many of those as we can get. Anyway, let's stare at the sniffers for just a little bit until they become big. That was actually unexpectedly quick, huh? It is very odd to see the size difference, I have to say. Anyway, long story short, is we now have a sniffer and we have to pray that he's not gonna walk off the edge. Don't do it, man. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're good. So yeah, let's now uh, focus on the most important bit, which is how do you get more than one sniffer? Well, you have to wait a very long time, once every 10 or 20 minutes. These guys will throw up a random sniffer seed. These sniffer seeds come in two forms. One of them is a pretty plant, and the other of which is also a pretty plant, but you can use the seeds. The other one is just... <sighs> Looks like brown dye, but it makes plant that is kind of cool looking, I guess. Anyway, with that said, now we have to wait for him to grow up, and we have to wait for both of them to start putting out some seeds. And in the meantime, we'll finish up the rest of the build. I don't know how it happened, but a sniffer managed to escape, and I'm trying to lure him back in, but the hole just isn't big enough. I don't understand how these guys possibly fit in the spaces they do, but be careful because you might lose them, apparently. Okay, new rule. We're gonna make sure that there are doors here so that the sniffers can't just walk out when they want to. Double door, nice and easy. They can walk out or they can stay in, but sniffers can't use doors. Unlike piglins, a fact that I am learning every single time and it hurts a little bit more, but pro tip, don't, don't rely on piglins not being able to open doors because they totally can. Anyway, now we've done uh, this part of the face. We have a little green line to represent the, you know, the... Uh, there's a sniffer, there's a green line on the sniffer's face, as we can see. I don't know what the green line is there for, but it is. And then we have a little bit of yellow, which will conclude with his very adorable nose. I guess we also need to put some eyes on the side of this, but that should be easy. While stacking up to get a little bit more green concrete, I think I've discovered exactly how sniffers escaped this in the first place. It wasn't my doorway, it was the big gaping hole at the back, which should have probably been obvious. Side note, do you think sniffers have tails? The answer is surprisingly not. They've just got this big dump truck square of a butt. And you know, I guess that that's how you want to do it, friend. Anyway, so we just want to finish up now uh, with a big green line that goes all the way around just to connect uh, from the red to what is going to be the yellow because this is where the face finishes. So I've only got 54 yellow concrete. So we really have to kind of just pray that this is enough to make it work. But we'll just assume that it is. Um, build all of these blocks up here. Build a big old line going out here. And then realize very quickly that we have definitely underbrought concrete. I, I still have it from when I made the banner in my world and I just assumed it would be enough. But I assumed all wrong. Oh yeah, that's not looking good, is it? There's a lot more than 23 blocks required to finish this. Okay, this should just about have finished the job for now. We have a sniffer with no eyes, no nose, and no face. <laughs> it looks like a piece of modern art, doesn't it? Honestly, 
You know, maybe the sniffer is a worker mod, not. But there is one problem. How do you enter a sniffer if this is going to be the ground level? We could have a little platform up like I've been doing for now and just uh, ram a doorway through that. But there's something inelegant about this solution, right? Like, I mean, uh, that is a... <laughs> <laughs> My sniffer heart has gone a little bit hor horrifying, honestly. Um, we could use bamboo because it's yellow and it might blend in. Actually, maybe we should try that. You know what? For a right now solution, it's not that terrible, but definitely the yellow of the concrete and the yellow of the bamboo just do not line up. By the way, my plan for the face is going to be to put some black wool on there. But since now I put this door there, it looks very weird. I'm just going to have to put some eyes. I'm just, I'm just going to have to make people believe that this is a sniffer face. Oh, look how cute it is. <laughs> okay, whatever. We're going to ignore this now because we have to focus on the actual sniffer farm itself. Whatever form or function you go for with this, it's very important how both my guys got out. But they did drop some sniffer seeds. Like I said, this so the, the, these are called torch flower seeds. They're not just sniffer seeds. And these are the most useful type that they can actually drop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get myself back up by using a water bucket. Um, again, pro tip. By climbing up using the water, we can get high enough up that we can hopefully force the sniffer up. Or whatever's happened right now is not what I wanted. So let's let's just go find the other sniffer and lead them in here, shall we? Where's he gone? I'm very concerned. I had two sniffers, and now I have one. You know, if I if I had three sniffers and I had two, wouldn't be a big deal. But two into one is a very, very, very big deal. Minecraft introduces one of the biggest passive mobs into their game ever and somehow I managed to lose it. This is seriously concerning. Why do they even want to get out of there? They had mud. You guys were happy. It was good. Okay, so that is a really big problem. One sniffer is no sniffers, and I do not know where it could have gotten to. Remember, in the very worst case scenario, this sniffer is drowning somewhere uh, all alone by getting trapped underneath something. Oh lord, where have you gone, second sniffer? Okay, this guy's going very fast this way, which means maybe he just got out, he got loose, and he headed away that I didn't see. Oh no, no. <laughs> Do you know how long it took me to find the other sniffer? And to hatch the other sniffer? <laughs> it was a very long time. It was so long. No, he can't be gone. I bet it, okay, you know, he might, he, he, maybe he wandered off, he went over here. Okay, it's a big, there's a slow render distance, maybe he just wandered out of the frame, and I'll find him any second now. Please tell me that's true. I would have heard him if he was drowning, surely. This is an incredibly valuable lesson on why you shouldn't let sniffers outside of a cage. You might think it's cute to let them free to roam, but they'll just vanish one day. Did it despawn? I don't know. Is he... Is he up in the middle of these bamboo? Like the... I don't know. He's He's gotta be around somewhere. There's no way he drowned without me hearing. Oh, they don't drop anything if you kill them, so you wouldn't even know. There's no proof of their existence if they decide to kill themselves. So you've gotta not let them. Honestly, you've just not gotta let them. Oh, come on, my dude. Why? Oh, I wanna, I wanna be productive about this, but I am going through all the phases of grief simultaneously right now. Why? Why? This is why you want free sniffer eggs, so you can have one of them kill themselves and still be fine. He must have just despawned. When did he despawn? Ugh. You know, it's fine. Let's bring you in. Be careful about it. That's clearly a thing we gotta say now. Clearly we also have to build a wall so they don't get out and try and drown themselves. You know, I hope you feel good about yourself, sniffer. I just got my torch seeds too. I just got them. Why do you have to do this to me, man? Why do you have to? There's so something I am trying to get better at recently is when something absolutely terrible happens, rather than, you know, dwelling on it, making it the worst thing in the world, I think you just have to accept, okay, bad things happened. You know, like, uh, how do you move on with this? Being angry about something is only useful if you use the anger for something. Just being angry about something to be angry because you like that, not very good. I, um... <laughs> I, I have a, uh, I, I mentioned before, I have a housemate, many, many fun things, is uh, one of their favorite things, is just to complain about stuff, they, they like to follow me around my living room when I'm just sitting there watching TV, interrupt me to be like, yeah, this thing you're watching, terrible, or let me tell you about something bad that's going, you know, like, complaining is fun, actively to them, also look how cute the sniffer looks, I mean, it looks like it's got a wide open mouth, like, you know that meme of the, with the guy of the cereal, it looks like that a little bit, but anyway, um, we need to go find another sniffer egg, so... 
I'll be back in a few days, I guess. I have been traveling for so long and haven't found a single new ocean ruin yet, let alone one with a sniffer egg. But in the meantime, here's a cherry grove I destroyed. That's nice. But I am just traveling and traveling and finding ocean after ocean with no ruins in them, which is one of the worst things to find. But it's what I'm dealing with, so things are going great. That sniffer didn't just end his own life. He ended my sanity, which was nice. Actually, wait, is that... That's either a geode or that's a thing. You know, you, I gotta start complaining about things more. Nope, I imagined it. There was nothing there. Don't know why I thought there was. That was silly, huh? <laughs> oh no, I'm wrong. It is. Oh, thank God. I have come all the way out here without any... Okay, that please. Please, game. Don't mess me around. I know you love to do it, but just... Wait, no, it's not a sniffer egg. That'd have been something, huh? If I immediately got another one. That would have felt good. The opposite of drowning is what that would have felt like. I'm just gonna desperately- Oh my god, the second one! Yes! Minecraft! You have redeemed yourself! Oh man, I'm gonna wait for that to float up the surface. I am so happy. What a find that was! My god! I spent so long looking for them the first few times. You know, at least Minecraft understands. It needs to- needs to be some amount of consistent. So, let's head back home and let's hope that the other one hasn't died while I've been gone. Please, Sniffer, don't do it to me. You know, this destroyed Cherry Grove was actually a really cool project, so I'm gonna make sure that I can come back here whenever I need to uh, by lighting a portal right over here. That should be nice and doable. Actually, did I already do that? Nah, I feel like I did, but I don't see any proof, which means we're gonna treat it like we didn't. Also, you know what? I've had... Uh, I, I think I'm gonna treat myself to a bigger never portal than normal. Just after the mess I've gone through, I like to treat myself a bit sometimes. And this is my version of a treat, apparently. And now to help future me understand that this is a cherry grove biome on the other side, I'll build a cherry tree. A very lazy one it's gonna be, I imagine. <laughs> With green leaves, because that's what we like. There we go. This, this should get the message across that it's a cherry grove biome, right? <laughs> This is kind of cute, actually. I think I'll build a second one. Yep, this is absolutely perfect, and now future me will know exactly where I'm heading, but let's go back to past me. Okay, so maintaining my very positive attitude, which I'm going to continue to do, has worked out in my favor. Now, I just put a little sniffer egg right over here, and I have to wait the, you know, 10 minutes for that to hatch, and the 40 minutes for it to grow, and then eventually, I can breed it. In the meantime, I am still going to pick up new things, like this pitcher pod, and uh, so let's throw this on the ground right here. And then also we're going to pick up things like the uh, the sniffer seeds. So here's the fun... Oh, I keep calling them that. They're torch flower seeds. Here's the fun thing about this. Mud is slightly lower than other blocks, which means that a hopper... Uh, which, by the way, fun fact, a hopper absorbs anything from the block above it. Uh, so we could put a hopper in our hopper by throwing it like this. This is the magic of what it does an item, which means if we want to automatically pick up our... Uh, say our sniffer seeds, all we need to do is place uh, right below this a hopper. As you can see, a hopper below that will immediately pick up the items. This is incredibly handy, as you can probably imagine, and we're going to use this uh, tiny little mechanism right here uh, to guarantee that we can pick up any uh, flowers that drop anywhere inside this place. How are we going to do that? We're going to start by placing down a chest somewhere nice and accessible where we can reach it. Then we're going to put a hopper directly above that chest and then directly, uh, you know, feeding into that. We could have some more hoppers if we really want to. I think we'll just do that for now. Just have a few of those all pointing over there. You can have a single hopper or you can have as many as you like, but they all need to point into each other such that eventually anything thrown in any of them ends up in the chest. It has that one. We go over here. However, uh, here's the thing. The hopper is one block too low below this. That is deliberate because what we're going to do is we're going to craft ourselves and use some minecart rails to ensure that happens instead. How does that work? Well, this is a minecart, and if you want to, you can combine said minecart with a hopper. Wow, that's nice. It gives you a minecart with hopper. This minecart with hopper is a you know, hopper, except it rolls around like a minecart would. And uh, so we can take full advantage off this by quickly making ourselves some rails. Now we've got a rail, and we can run those rails all the, way, all the way around these hoppers if we want to. And indeed we do, though not in a circle like that. Now we can place some red concrete, which represents the underbelly of the sniffer, and on top of that, we can place some rails. And then boom, we now have a way that every single block underneath this mud can be covered effectively 
uh, by, okay, so we'll do this over there too, covered effectively by minecart rails. However, the minecart's not going to roll around by itself, so we just need some powered rails. Oh no, don't fall off the edge now. Okay. <laughs> uh, so the minecart's going to need some powered rails somewhere in here. But the idea here is fairly simple. I'm going to throw, uh, you know, my, uh, my sniffer stuff onto the ground, and then uh, we're going to go underneath and show you what happens as my minecart comes through. The minecart picks up all the goodies. Oh god, it's... A little bit cramped down here will be a little bit of a pain to build. But then we give the, uh, the, the the rail a little bit of a push. It goes all the way around, goes over all of these, and in our chest goes all of the stuff which has ended up in the hopper. That is all it takes. One hopper running around constantly, checking the floor above it to see if any sniffer seeds have landed. Um, it's a little easier said than done because it is going to require a lot of red concrete and a lot of rails, so it's a kind of tech-intensive build. But if you want a simple version of this, just make your sniffer farm tiny. I just happen to want a giant sniffer. I had to go that way, which means it's going to take me a lot of rails, a lot of hoppers, and a lot of stuff like that, which I'm going to have to build out now, starting with getting the concrete. And then let's take the red concrete and let's place some rails, and we'll have to make sure there are powered rails every now and then. But the idea here is fairly simple. It's just placing the blocks and getting it done. So while we do such a simple task that I'm sure will go maybe slightly wrong somewhere, I think I, uh, I, I really want to like elaborate a tiny bit more just uh, to... You know, those curious about earlier. Like, I think, um, you know, some 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 people do uh, relax by, like, purely turning off their brains. But I think even the person who, like, you know, loves the most the idea of, like, yeah, my, my dream uh, holiday is when I do nothing. Even people who love the idea of doing nothing still do something when they're put in a room for long enough. I think, uh, you know, the more that you're doing stuff that you don't want to, the more you start to realize that, like, oh, the dream would be no one telling you what to do. Uh, maybe even yourself. Maybe you like the idea of being a place without that. But I think it's weird that there are some people who really can actually turn off their brain fully. Like, even even me, like, towards the end of the night, if I'm, like, uh, you know, trying to just sit there, uh, my, my brain's racing with weird thoughts about, like, okay, what about videos? What about this? What about that? Um, and I'm, I'm interested to learn there are people who don't. Also, interested to see that the sniffer shadow <laughs> is visible down here. I can keep an eye on my sniffer. Well, oh, the egg just hatched. Did you hear that? Oh, yes. I, I am keeping a close eye on this guy. You are important to me, and you will never be free. Both of those things are true. And oh, we got a we got a pitcher pod, by the way. For now, we're gonna pick these up manually, or if we want to, we can just throw them right back on the ground. As long as it's over here, it will be picked up. Handy little feature, eh? My new budgeting method, by the way, is that any piece of red concrete that's not gonna be directly exposed, I'm gonna put some terracotta there instead, because I am drastically running out of it, and it is a lot more expensive. I think when you're playing survival, it's really important to prioritize where your expensive blocks should go, uh, because ultimately, you don't have an infinite number of them, and I think that's an important thing to know. Okay, so this... Also, you can see it's still a baby sniffer, but isn't it just adorable watching it move around? Am I, am I looking at shadows calling them adorable? Is that where my life has led me? <laughs> but, um, no, yeah, I think, uh, I, I think having a... Uh, a real discussion is something that a lot of people will forego because it can be uh, like a harder thing But I think those are where you actually increase your uh, Your learning and knowledge and understanding of either your world of either the world or even just yourself sometimes And I think that is always gonna be something worth doing like isn't isn't understanding the whole the whole point at some point Maybe it's not but I feel like it is anyway So now we go back from this to red concrete because we're done with it and just slowly but surely we cover the entire thing with a rail system. You could technically cover half it with a rail system and get half as effectiveness. But again, at some point, you might as well just collect all the blocks that you're owed. And that's what I'm going to do right now. By the way, we now have our second torch flower seed, which officially means we can breed these guys together uh, once that's possible. I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to throw it right into the hoppers. Oh, maybe I'm not. I'm going to throw it right into where I think the hoppers are. Is it over here? No. Is, are the hoppers over there? No, they're not. Oh, right. There's a minecart has to go on first. So I have to find the minecart. This is a really silly game, but I, I'm going to see if I can. Oh, there we go. I threw it and it's gone. So the minecart is over here. Look at that. Wow. Magic. And uh, I suppose... I have to grab that mud out of there <laughs> right now. And now we have to finish uh, placing the track. Uh, I would say doing it from above is probably not ideal because there's a tiny chance my sniffers fall in. But I'm just going to try and avoid that from under here. And this is just so much easier than placing kind of awkwardly. I think, uh, yeah, doing things comfortably is important. I didn't realize that for so long. Like, uh, squeezing past something is entirely possible. But you don't realize that you just actively, like, internally, whether you know it or not, 
you would try to avoid that, like when it comes to like designing furniture. And so when you design something in your Minecraft world, I think you should design it the same. Like make it, make something in your world that you actually want to come past every day. And then you'll actually do it versus if you design the opposite. No, <laughs> get out of here, friend. This isn't meant for you. Okay, I don't actually know how to do that. And if he sneaks off under there, he's going to ruin my day. Please come back. Just, just pretend there isn't a hole in the mud. Thank you very much. It seems I've made a slight miscalculation here in my zigs and my zags. But there's actually a way you can fix this if you ever run into this particular issue of poor planning that I have. All you gotta do is just kind of run it like sideways a whole bunch. It might ruin the momentum of the minecart a little bit, so we'll have to test that. Okay, so now I just have to go down here and get the minecart running. Is that gonna be easy? I guess we'll find out. Oh, are you growing up? I think so, I think that's what I'm hearing. Oh, uh, they grow up so fast, am I right? I'm actually not right, it was just this guy harvesting a pod. But now, we need to make sure that pod can be harvested by uh, the, this, and so we're gonna send it on a little bit of a run round. So, uh, just to make sure, okay, so we're gonna deliberately, oh gosh. So now we have to send that all the way around, which might be easier said than done. No! Stop! What's wrong with you? For now though, I need to make sure that this goes all the way around. Is that gonna be easy or possible? I don't know for sure, which means every time we want out, we have to do this same thing, which is a firework rocket or a scaffold, or a ladder, or whatever alternative you want to use. But there we go. Have we got the thing round? Yes, we have. Oh no, it's not quite. Okay, so we just have to get it all the way onto the- Once it's on the powered rails, it can start looping by itself, and all our problems go away. How did you get down here? <laughs> what? <laughs> how did that happen? And how did that- Oh, there was, there's not even a hole. I am so frustrated. I can't even describe it. And he might even like grow up and then... Okay, so we have to break. No, just, just come on, dude. How are you ruining my farm like this? All day, every day. Oh God, there's a hole in the right. Of course there is. <laughs> okay, so this time we're gonna hopefully not have everything fall off. We're gonna place our rail here and, oh God, I don't know, I have not planned this correctly. Oh no. Okay, just place a, a block there. Oh no, I did that entirely wrong. Wait, no, here's the, here's the easy way. I just do it from above and then I have to give the minecart a little push. How do I do that from up here? Do I shoot it with a bow? Do I punch it? it? It really does feel silly. There's no other way to do this, huh? Like I just have to jump in there, get it out, break the block, stand up, then re-break break that block, and then place that down. Oh, <laughs> a little bit of sequencing involved there, but that's a-okay. And now we'll place these two blocks and we watch as everything happens perfectly over and over and over again. So we'll place a rail over there, place this on the side of that, that's not on the side at all. Don't, why do you have an attraction to these holes, Sniffer? I mean, I guess someone has to. But I don't want it to be you, friend. Wait, no, I've got a better idea. Rather than making it wool, why don't I make this seem like it's deliberate? Because I need to have a moss block in here specifically when I get those baby Sniffers, right? And so that is where that will go. Aha, it is clever and deliberate, I tell you. Definitely clever, definitely deliberate, and oh God. This is a dangerous place, apparently. Now the only finishing touches we need are- Oh god, this is adorable. The only finishing touches we need- Wait, let's- Let's, uh, see if the thing works, by the way. But the finishing touches we need are to add the eyes, and to add this facial structure. The face really is just two giant nose holes at the top, and then, like, kind of a ring going round. But I'm gonna make my own face for this guy, because these nose holes are nice. Don't get me wrong, I just feel like they could be nicer. First of all, we make these slightly taller while adding the eyes just over here, I guess. That seems like as good as place than any. And then we do the same on the other side. The eyes probably should line up, but you know, if you're making your own sniffer, you can follow your own rules, I reckon. Um, so now this looks a little bit more like a sniffer. Looks kind of cute with the wide open mouth. And then now we have to make sure, again, we could do the very lazy solution here is just like, well, that's a sniffer, that's the mouth, that's the way in. We could have like a little staircase up. But I have a more fun idea, right? I'm gonna use the pink terracotta to make kind of like a sniffer tongue. I don't know if three blocks wide is the right width, but we're just gonna go with that anyway. And we're gonna make a little tongue entrance down to the ground. And now it'll just look like, maybe we have to remove that too. 
Now it'll just look like the sniffer has a really wide tongue. Is that what tongues look like? It's not. I think it, it probably should be like this. The sniffer just has a wide tongue that he's opening, and then we'll go into the mouth through that. And then this is his mouth area. And then this is the real area where there is still very much uh, a sniffer growing and doing his thing. I think the sniffer is looking really good from this angle, by the way. But yeah, all I need to do is quickly craft myself a iron, gold, redstone block. They're all the same to me, really. You know, when you get nine of something together, why is it called a block of something? But there are only so many things that are blocks. But anyway, so then we're going to go through here. We're going to take the existing block with this on. And we're just going to destroy it. Make sure we place down the block of redstone. Quickly go back in because, oh, <laughs> it's trapped over there now. Oh, my sniffers grew up. Wow, I took so long fixing this. They genuinely just aged all the way out, which is great and exactly what I want to hear. Because now they can't fall down gaps anymore, which is one nice little thing. But then also, actually, we're going to leave this here just in case it ever breaks again. Let's see if it comes through a second time. If it does, that is a sign that it is looping perfectly. If it doesn't, that is a sign something is horribly wrong. Oh, it does. Thank God. It goes a little bit slowly, but that is not a problem for me. And now we just place the mud that we have in the remaining gaps. Boom. We finally have a working sniffer farm. It broke me a little bit in there. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I was less than okay for a bit. But now I am more than okay, because here's the wonderful thing. I've got some torch flower seeds. In fact, I have a fair few torch flower seeds because of my wonderful collecting farm that's been running with one sniffer. And now I can breed two baby sniffers. So yeah, these sniffers will only breed together with torch flower seeds, which makes you almost wish. Oh wait, I, I swear I gave him seeds and he didn't go into love mode. Okay, there we go. So sometimes when you breed a, a, a sniffer, this has happened to me before, by the way. Um, sometimes when you do it, they just won't go into love mode. So if you want to be really cautious, you could get a few of them. But either way, when they do this, they eventually make love. They go do some weird stuff, and you'll end up with a baby... Well, not, it's not a baby snifflet. You end up with a, a sniffer egg, which can be used for some very interesting things. Oh, I'm guessing the baby sniffer egg would have ended up on the floor. Unless this is how they lay eggs. Either he's laying an egg or he's taking a nap, and honestly... I can't tell the difference. Don't we all take a little nap after we're done making more babies? Anyway, with that said, let's go see if there is an egg down here. Oh yeah, there is. That is my third sniffer ready to go. And now I use my dedicated moss block spot and boom, in no time whatsoever, I'll have a third mob which will dig for more sniffers. So the fun thing about this farm is you really do just kind of leave it and then stuff happens, and then you leave. You know, it's one of those farms that really is just, it's a slow version of a sugarcane farm. It's a slow version of a bamboo farm, because for every bamboo you get, you get more bamboo. For every, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, sugarcane you get, you get more. And the same thing is just true for the sniffer on a much slower scale. I would say this is the Minecraft farm for the person who likes Minecraft farms, but wants a giant <laughs> dinosaur-like mob in exchange. So, um, yeah, at this point, I've, uh, I've worked for hours on this video. I was going to say this is a logical point to end the Let's Play. But you know what? To wax a little philosophically with you here, um, you know, is it about, uh, is, is it, you know, is a YouTube video or anything you do about the work that you put into it or the thing that other people receive? You know, is... Is the work you put in as important as the effort that people get out of something? You could put like hours of your life into something that people hate. Is that thing still good? And vice versa. If you put 10 minutes in something that people love, is that thing still lovable? And uh, in, in the same vein, I'm sure the Let's Play is perfectly great to end now. But I'm going to leave it for a while. And we're going to see exactly what happens when we get free and hopefully more snippers. We, we should get more sniffer seeds now. Which means more sniffers. Which means more sniffers for more sniffer seeds for more sniffers and so on and so forth. But um, yeah, this is indeed a sniffer farm. We now have four sniffers about to hatch. And once we do, we'll have way more seeds. And honestly, a lot of people say this is basic. But to me, this is the essence of a decent Minecraft farm. If every farm was like this, you might get bored. But I think that having some simple things uh, in there is not necessarily a bad thing. Sure, you. Uh, I think it's uh, perfectly normal for your mind to sometimes be occupied elsewhere, but I kind of like simple tasks that allow you to do that, and I really enjoyed the process of this. It wasn't anything like simple. In fact, I checked the time on the recordings to be sure. It was 
Uh, 12, it was six hours ago today when I started recording uh, this Let's Play, and I'm now just about at the finish. You could argue I should sit here and wait longer until we have a hundred sniffers, but this is uh, my goal. This is my new farm, and I'm really excited by it. Hopefully, it's something you enjoyed uh, watching along with. The Let's Play is, of course, the weekly update as to what's been going on in Minecraft, as well as my life and everything else in general, and I hope that you enjoyed this particular week's peak. Uh, I am still working towards getting every single trim. This was just one tiny little piece of that. Obviously, I need to get every single 1.20 feature, and the two sniffer flowers are both examples of that. But now that I am closer towards having as many as I'd like, I feel pretty good in knowing that I can work on the rest of them. So many to go, lots of my world to explore, and uh, if you want a little peek into that, consider subscribing to the channel. Otherwise, I hope you all enjoyed, and uh, <laughs> I'll see you next time for some slightly confusing cherry leaf related gameplay. Goodbye. Oh, also, yeah, the Let's Play is out every single Monday, except this week, where it was both Wednesday and Friday. It's a Monday usually. It's just, you know, uh, we decided to go for a different schedule. Hope you found that fun and not confusing. If you found it confusing, watch this on Monday, and we can all just pretend. Wow, who doesn't hate Mondays? I sure do feel like that one orange cat right now. Okay, thank you for watching. Hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you next time for my next 1.20 adventure in this world.